How do I create a new tree in Ancestry? The answer isn't very obvious. I'm on the home page here, and I want to create a new tree. I'm investigating a new match. It's going to be an experimental tree where I put in some tentative facts that I know, and I want to do some research. I'm hovering over trees, I'm going to click down to the bottom, create and manage trees. Now, if you're like me, then you're still not seeing, well, where do I create a new tree? What I'm seeing is all my research trees, but just scroll right down to the bottom, just scroll down, and there, nestled down at the bottom left, is your option to create a new tree. So click on create a new tree. And you're taken into a wizard that really is quite useful for getting you started. Um, it takes a few clicks to get going, and the first thing Ancestry is asking us to do is to add the home person. So that is usually going to be yourself, but if you're researching an experimental branch, it may be a tree for your match. You may be creating a tree for your cousin or for your friend or your neighbor, but whoever that is, you'll probably be adding that person as the home person. So I'm going to say that this is for my neighbor, Ryan, birthplace, and click continue. Okay, so now I have a tree with a single entry. And from here, you might want to save your tree. Well, as far as I'm aware, you can't. There's no option here to save your tree. You have to put in one additional person. Now you can either add a spouse, you can add a father or mother. I'm going to add a father for John, whose name is, let's say, Tom. So I'll mark this fictitious parent as deceased. And here, I'm going to just click save on the second person. And now Ancestry is asking me to save the tree. So it's this point you will provide a name for your tree. Ancestry is offering you a name. It's see how it's taken. It's basically taken the surname of the home person and it's naming it as Ryan Family Tree. You may want to name it something completely different. In my case, if I'm doing research and it's, a, it's an experimental tree, I just prefix it with research to let me know the status of this particular tree. Now, here's an important part. It's this middle section here. Notice how this option is pre-selected to being true, it's on. What this means is that by default, if you save the tree without making any changes to this option, your tree will be a public tree. Just be sure that that's what you want. It's very easy just to click save here and kind of forget that you're creating a public tree. Usually, or quite often, you will want to have a public tree and the benefits are given in this drop down here, but sometimes you may want to have a private tree. Now, in my case, this tree is experimental. I'm not entirely sure of my facts, so I don't want it to be public. I want it to be private. I'm just going to deselect this option, which sets the tree to private, but the tree is still searchable in the Ancestry index over time. And we'll come back to that in a little bit later. But now I click on Save Tree, and I can continue adding in the extra details. Now I just want to double check the tree settings. So up here in this drop down, click on tree settings. We land here on the tree info page, which gives you the name and a few other options. This isn't the tab that I want. So click on the middle tab, which is privacy settings. And you notice that this tree is private. So these are actually toggles. So if I clicked on public here, it would untoggle the private tree, it would set it to public. You don't want it to be public, want it to be private. The changes that you make here don't take into effect that you, you scroll down a little bit and you click on Save Changes. I haven't made any changes, it's set to Private Tree, but notice this checkbox is not pre-selected. By default, your tree is public. If you set it to being private as you save the tree, this checkbox is not selected. So the tree is still going to be found in the search index. Now what that means is that if someone is doing a search and your tree is private but the search throws up um, the name that matches someone in your tree and that person is deceased, then certain basic details such as birth and death details are shown 
in the Ancestry search results. Now, if like me, in this particular example, I'm creating an experimental tree and I am not sure of my facts. In fact, I'm following a rumor that Great Aunt Bertha was fourth cousin to Harry Truman, right? I don't really believe it. So I don't want to send any other researchers astray. So I do not want the entries in this tree that are a little bit spurious while I'm still verifying them. I don't want them to turn up in the search index. So I'm going to click on this box, I'm going to set it to true, which prevents the tree from being found in the search index. So one more thing to note here about saving changes. As you toggle your tree from public to private, I could be researching away, and now finally I've verified that line. I think, aha, it was true. That family rumor was true. Great Aunt Bertha is a cousin to Harry Truman, to this person, that person, and the other person. I may then be satisfied. I may want to make my tree public. If I come into the tree settings here, make the tree public, those effects take place immediately and other ancestry members can see the tree. The search index is a little bit different. I won't go into the details here, but it takes a lot longer for changes to this to come into effect. Unsearchable and click on save changes. And now if I go back to create and manage trees, and let's scroll down a little bit. We'll call it research. Here we go. Here is my new tree, research Ryan family tree. I hope that's helpful. If you want more tutorials and guides to using Ancestry and Ancestry DNA features, check out our blog on data mining DNA. In particular, we're running a series of guides or chapters called an in-depth guide to Ancestry. So if you go to part one, which is all about setting up your tree in a way that is most beneficial to your search. What you'll find at the top of every chapter is a link to all the other chapters in this growing series on using Ancestry and Ancestry DNA. I'll put a link down in the description of this YouTube video. And also please subscribe to our YouTube video for further notifications of helpful step-by-step -step guides.